All right, make another video here on OpenIPC. There's a link to a playlist down in the video description if you want to see the other videos that I've made that you possibly missed. I'm not going to regurgitate everything, but I just want to sort of highlight some of the things I talked about before. It's going to lead into why I'm going to talk about other stuff today. Uh, I made a video on this product here, the RunCam Wi-Fi link based on OpenIPC. These are the parts. I want to show you the hardware again and then explain the software side in a little bit more detail because there's a lot of confusion and misinformation about how the system should work. And also, um, there are a lot of questions as to why it's taking so long for me to make my videos. Because um, you know, basically the system, you know, in a nutshell, is not really commercially ready while there are commercially available products. This is not at the same level as a DJI FPV 03 or HD0 or Waxnail. Just, it's not there yet. And I'm going to try and explain why, so that maybe for those of you that are pretty impatient out there, you'll have an, a little bit of a better understanding as to where we are right now and how far away we are from something like Waxnail. So anyway, this is a, a snapshot from my run cam video. And basically you have uh, the receiver part here, which is like a uh, USB Wi-Fi adapter and you have the transmitter module here which is a based on a Wi-Fi um, transmitter this is all Wi-Fi derived hardware so while the name is called Wi-Fi in their the way Runcam uses it uh, this is all hijacked stuff so it's not based on the Wi-Fi standard. So if you think about like Wi-Fi on your phone or in your home network, this is not that. It's using hardware that's really, might be the same or very similar to what you have, but it, but the hardware has been hijacked and then the software is completely different. It's its own protocol, which is why it's called OpenIPC. And the reason it's called OpenIPC is because it is based on the second part here, the camera. So IPC stands for IP camera. And if you're familiar with like security cameras from like WISE, for example, there's a bunch of other vendors out there. There's literally hundreds. Uh, it's a commodity product. Basically, it's a camera that with a system on a chip, or SOC. It's basically like a little mini computer and runs an operating system. And that sends the data over your Wi-Fi network. Again, we're using the Wi-Fi hardware here um, to so you can see things on your smartphone, you know, security cameras, etc. And the camera part that you're going to see referenced throughout the documentation I'm going to show you later is the camera board here. And on this here is the SOC, which does all the video processing. It basically takes the video that the camera sensor, and this is called the camera, camera sensor, or the camera sensor board. This is actually what's collecting the video image sending it via this cable here to the camera board and then the soc does the video processing and basically turns it from that video image into a in in our case for fpv it's going to be an h264 or an h265 video stream then that gets sent out via these wires here to the transmitter and then that gets transmitted over to the um, receiver over here and then as you saw from the video this receiver sends it out via USB-C to the smartphone that I showed you in that video which is not shown in this picture. Now the Emacs version of the system is a little bit different so this is the receiver part here and they've actually it's basically this, it's the same part I believe it's like the RTL 8812AU Wi-Fi receiver uh, I believe they're using the exact same part. It's just repackaged here in a nice 3D printed case with two antennas like this, with actually two different types of antennas. Whereas this is like an off-the-shelf product. I think Asus makes this or some one of the there's dozens of vendors out there that make this part here. And this is basically for PCs and laptops to get Wi-Fi into your Windows computer or Apple. And it has these two antennas here. So this is just a repackaged or Emacs has repackaged this part into something a little bit sort of more friendlier or kind of more familiar with for us FPV pilots. But the Emacs system is also, again, is basically the same stuff. So this, this is that run cam part here from Emacs. It doesn't have the fan. 
That's the transmitter. You've got this part here, which is the camera board and the camera sensor. And this is the camera part. This has the same, um, the same uh, SOC. In this case, uh, the SOC is made by a company called Sigma Star. And you'll find that, uh, I'll show you the documentation later, that there's actually lots of vendors that make compatible OpenIPC parts because OpenIPC is a larger system. It's not just FPV. I'll explain that here in a second. And then you have this last part here. This is the network cable. This is an Ethernet port here. Uh, in order to interface with this computer, basically it's a Linux computer, essentially a tiny Linux computer. You have to connect to your home network via Ethernet, and then you can log in via SSH to the Linux computer here, and then you use a bunch of Unix commands to change files. You can edit files, etc. cetera. Um, also update your software, update settings via the uh, terminal. Basically it's a text terminal. So if all of this stuff is kind of like going over your head and you're like, what is he talking about? This is the reason why we're a long way away from uh, this being a product that like most normal people can use. If you have a computer background, like I have a computer background in engineering, but 25, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, a long time ago, don't really use it too much these days. But if you have a computer background, you, this, this is probably, you're very familiar with this. Not It's very easy, no problems. But if you don't, this is going to be very foreign to you and alien. So let's go to the documentation. I'm going to link this down in the video description. You should start here. It's called openipc.org. It gives you an overview of what OpenIPC is and how it relates to FPV, which is, I think, what most of you guys are interested in. So OpenIPC is a collection of uh, software. Um, there's, there's probably going to be more later. I mean, I actually, um, I, I don't, I'm not 100% familiar with everything, but I, I can kind of give you sort of a, a general direction of where you should start looking if you want more information, because I think I'm not going to be able to be, I'm not going to be able to put out content fast enough to sort of appease the appetite of some of the people out there. They're very impatient and want everything at once. Uh, it's just not possible for me. So I would say for those of you that are very impatient, start here and start reading. Um, they have installation instructions, etc. But this, this, this here is for people that are interested in OpenIPC in general, because what it is is you can take this sort of off the shelf hardware and then use this custom software to hijack that hardware to use it for your own purposes. So what those purposes can be, you should probably go check out here at this other link here. It says the OpenIPC IPC wiki. And you can go and read all the stuff here about the project, supported devices, supported sensors for SOC. Um, it talks about some of the different SOCs out here like the Coke, High Silicon, Ingenic, Novatech, Sigma Star, et cetera. The ones that um, Emacs and RunCam are using are the Sigma Star uh, SOC. And depending on which SOC you're using, you're gonna have different firmware. But this is, for, for our, our purposes, the Sigma Star is the one we care about. You have different usages here. Uh, there's different streamers, for example. There's the Majestic streamer. I think that's the main one. I think that's the one that's actually the one that RunCam and Emacs are using. And by the way, not everything here is open source. I believe the Majestic Streamer is closed source. So something to be aware of that, you know, this is a collection of stuff that's being wrapped into OpenIPC, but it's using other stuff as well. And some of it isn't all, not everything is open source. Some of it isn't, but this is the, the Majestic Streamer is a piece of software that runs on that SOC. So you have that firmware that loads the operating system at the SOC. And then the streamer is what's, actually encoding the video signal into H.264 or H.265, and I believe it'll encode it to some other formats as well. That's what this is, so you can go click on this link and read all about that. You can do other things like YouTube streaming and HomeKit integration, so it's not just FPV. So for those of you that are interested in mainly the FPV stuff, there is a section here just for FPV, and it's kind of, you know, uh, you know subset of what OpenIPC is. It talks about some of the other hardware out here. So I think OpenIPC does have a store somewhere with limited amount of hardware you can buy, like the all-in-one Mario, which is similar to what Emacs and RunCam have. And then there's the Ultrasight. 
Some, they talk about things about how to what to buy, steps from buy to fly. Let's just you know take a quick look at this. This will give you an example of what you're looking at here, and you can you know for beginners, you know this is a broad overview. What kind of hardware you need to get, etc. Of course, you don't need to do this. This is for you DIY guys, you know, uh, for the guys that just want to deal with the run camera or the Emac system. Obviously, this page is probably not relevant for you. Now, the thing that's missing from the Emacs and the run cam systems that are currently available now is that the fact that it's outputting USB-C to a phone and then we're using an app like uh, FPView or Pixel Pilot to decode that H.264, H.265 stream and turning that into video that we can see. What we don't have now is a a ground station you can just buy from like a run cam or an Emacs. You have to build that. And you, there's another page for that. And so here's the link for this. There's these current uh, ground stations that are currently being supported and being developed. The Orange Pi 3B, Pi 5, Pi 5 Plus, and the Rats 03W. And I believe the Rats 03W is the one or the most popular one, I believe. Um, so we'll click on that link and it'll take you over here. And just to give you an idea, I'm not going to read all this. You can read this on your own. But uh, there's there's videos out there on how to build this. I'm going to build one myself. I'm probably going to make a video on how, how to put this together. But essentially, what the RATS 03W is, it's a board that takes, it's, it's a decoder board. So it's like a Raspberry Pi. Like again, like a little mini Linux computer running an operating system. It's going to take that uh, stream that's being, you know, collected by that receiver via USB-C, and it's going to take that, you know, H.264, H.265 stream, and then decode that into video. And then what the, what is nice about this one is it actually will output it to HDMI. It's got like a micro HDMI port on it. So this is what this is. You got to build. You got to do all this stuff. You got to get a you know flash image and yeah, you know, there's all the stuff you got to do. To it's a lot of work. I mean, obviously, I could make a whole video about this, but essentially, uh, you have to build the ground station. So the ground station essentially is the the Ratsta 03W board, the decoder board plus the receiver board and the antennas. And that essentially turns it into something like, uh, you know, like a VRX. Like, so if you think, think about the um, walk snail VRX, where you just have basically the receiver and, and it outputs HDMI, well, that receiver also has the decoder stuff in there as well as the antennas. And that's essentially what you're building. You're building your own VRX. And that's what this is here. So I'll have to have another video on that. And this is what this is ultimately what my goal is going to be because. I don't really like flying through the phone as I showed you in the previous video. Again, the playlist link will be down in the video description. But yeah, so ultimately this is what I want to go, this is what we, we need and we want to go to is we not only need the encoding stuff from, you know, the stuff you're going to put on your drone that's going to encode the video and then send it off, transmit it. We need something to decode it and then present it to us in a format that we're familiar with, like basically most of us fly through goggles. And that's what this is going to be. Ultimately, we're going to have to see. So we don't have that second part. We have, yeah, we have the phone. We can we can get video, but it's not quite there yet. We need the VRX so you can connect it to your favorite goggles and get your video that way. Also, one more last question before I end the video. Uh, people were asking, why was I flying? Or in my last flight video, why was there no Betaflight OSD? And the reason is uh, the um, system currently, as if you buy it right off the shelf right now, of course it might change in the future, but right now if you buy it from Runcam or Emacs, the firmware that's on there uh, is set up for Mavlink telemetry and not Betaflight OSD. So you have, in order for you to get the Betaflight OSD, you have to actually go in to uh, log into the system and install some software, it's called MSP OSD, and then change some settings to get that to work. Um, I will have another video on that later, if that's something that really interests you, uh, if it's really urgent. I, I, I know some people are like, I needed it yesterday. 
um, let me know. I, I know there's a couple people that are really bugging me about that, but um, I will, depending on how many people are really interested in that, I may make that, I, mean, I might move that video up a little, uh, you know, in terms of the uh, priorities, I might move it up a little bit higher. But right now it isn't super important because I'm more interested in like getting the um, video, the, the, this rats they're going there for the VRX. I wanted to kind of do that first before I have bother with, you know, basically the OSD is kind of like window dressing and not really important right now. So again, let me know in the comments, but you know, this is basically, I want to get that information out there for you guys so that at least you guys can research it because there's a lot of people leaving just like weird comments and my videos, you know, I'm just deleting them because it's just mis misinformation. You know, they're saying this is just Wi-Fi. And like, if it's Wi-Fi, you should be able to connect to your home network and you can't because the software is different. It's using Wi-Fi hardware. It's hijacked Wi-Fi hardware, but it's not Wi-Fi. So please ignore people like that. And then all kinds of weird things like it's got better latency than HD zero or it's got worse latency than like the, it's like the worst latency of all. We don't really know all those things yet because it really depends on the decoding hardware which is still a thing that's kind of up in the air. It, 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 it could be really, really great or not so great depending upon the decoding hardware. So that's where things stand right now. You know, it's like what, September, early September, 2024. Who knows everything I just said here in the last 20 minutes, it's probably going to be obsolete in about three weeks. So take it for what it is. Please go to these links for correct information. Don't go into the comment section looking for information there because I think most of it is either incorrect or um, people are just kind of making assumptions based on things that they've heard that aren't even really correct. So go here to this, the, the links. These, these websites here have actual facts versus just basically innuendo that you're going to see in the comment section. So don't go, go, don't go looking there for information because that's not where the correct stuff is. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you want to see next, etc. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.